Michael Froman with the Backwoodsman's Institute. This video right here is kind of an add-on to a video I made a while back about bow hunting and shooting through brush. That video was geared more towards compounds or bows with sights. This video, I'm going to be talking about hunting with traditional bows. All right, I hunt with a compound and a recurve. And with, when you're archery hunting, it's very important to know if you can take a shot through brush or not. Because any little branch can send that arrow askew. And you can miss your target or wound it and possibly not find it. So, what I'm going to be showing you here is the method that I use with my traditional bow, my recurve, on how I know if I can shoot through the brush or not. All right, just like with our other video, I'm going to be putting myself and the camera into situations on a stationary target. I got a deer target in that valley down there. And I can't get the head to stay on it for the life of me. So it might look a little weird, but we're just going to have to roll with it. Here's our first scenario. We got an overhanging branch over our deer target down there. All right, now I'm all lined up. How I shoot traditional archery is I shoot instinctively, meaning when I draw back and I get to my anchor point, my eyes stay on my intended target. I pick a hair out on that deer or on that animal, and whenever I get to my anchor point and everything feels right, I let it go. All right, now how I judge if I can shoot under an overhanging limb or not is I like to size up my obstacle first, being that overhanging limb. What I mean by that is I'm going to draw back and aim directly at that limb. Then I'm going to switch to my deer. If there's a gap, that means through my instinctive shooting, if I pick out that spot on that branch and it's up here, then I aim at my deer and it's down there, that means that I'm going to be able to squeeze a shot in there. Because through instinctively, I'm imagining my arrow's trajectory going through the air. So by shooting traditional archery instinctively, my brain is imagining my arrow's trajectory from its highest point. The arrow's coming off my bow and dropping to my target. It's going to drop more and I have to aim higher the further my target is away from me. This picture right here depicts us aiming at our obstacle. Now our brain is telling us right now this is exactly how everything has to be lined up in order for us to hit that branch. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch to our target. Notice the point of the arrow shifting downwards. This is creating a gap is what we'll call it. But this gap is our brain telling us that the highest trajectory of our arrow when we're aiming at our target is not going to cross paths with the exact same setup that we have to have in order to hit that branch so we know that we can take this shot. In this scenario right here we're sizing up our obstacle then we're going to switch to our target. Notice the gap that was formed between the point of our arrows. It barely moved. Maybe it didn't even move at all. What this is telling me that is that our brain is seeing these imaginary trajectories as being too similar and they're going to intersect at the point of that obstacle or that branch. So I would not take this shot. I can't give you a standard measurement on the gap being formed at the point of the arrow. It's going to be different for every person and it's going to come with practice. And I'm going to give you some methods here at the end of the video where you can practice without worrying about harming any arrows. I know it sounds complicated but we're going to take this shot. Size up the obstacle. Go to your deer. And it cleared. All right. So that's how you see if you can shoot under or over an overhanging branch. All right. For me to put a distance on the gap that needs to be, I, I can't. All right. I shoot a 60 pound Browning Wasp. I got a 28 inch draw. So I'm shooting 60 pounds. My arrows are flying faster than someone shooting 45 pound draw. And their trajectory on a 45 pound draw for the same distance I'm shooting is going to be a lot higher. So it comes with practice. That's why in, in the first video I said it comes with practice with a recurve, getting comfortable with it. But the method I use to see if I can shoot at the overhang or under an overhanging branch is I size it up. Aim at the branch, shift down to your deer. If there's a gap, a gap you're comfortable with, and from you shooting enough and seeing your trajectory and understanding your, tra your trajectory, you should feel comfortable before you take that shot. All right, And that's how I feel comfortable. I size it up. All right, how are we going to see if we can keyhole through brush, picture an opening and a bunch of briars or something, a hole that you have to thread the needle with your arrow through that hole to hit your target. We're going to use the same fundamentals as our overhanging branch, all right? When we're pulling back, and you don't have to be a full draw to size up your obstacle, okay? So the first thing we're doing, we're sizing up our obstacle. It can be when you're pulling back. And the more you practice with your recurve or your longbow, the more it becomes just a mental picture. You imagine your trajectory going through there, and you know 
if you can make that shot or not. But to practice, to start to get to that point, you size up the obstacle. Size up high, the top part of that, part of that hole, and the bottom part of that hole. Your left and right should be good because we're just talking about your trajectory here. So you size it up, and if you're in between there, you can take that shot. All right, I had to pick the camera up to eye level to me. This is what I see. I got a sapling on this side of me, my deer vitals. I got some other briars and saplings over here, top and bottom. I got a hole, an opportunity through this brush to take a shot. So I'm gonna size it up and see if I can. Set the camera back down. So here we go. Sizing up, top's clear. Bottom's clear. Pick it up a little bit. And right there is where I hit. All right, I was sitting here practicing and I was thinking you couldn't really tell what I was doing when I was behind the camera. So I'm going to give you a front side view of me, see what it looks like. And I'm going to size up, and you can do this when you're drawing back or when you're at full draw. Size up your top. Size up your bottom, get back on your deer. If there's a gap, let it go. Now let's go see how we shot. All right, there's three right there in the kill zone. That deer ain't gonna go very far. All right, that's how you shoot through brush with traditional archery, recurve or longbow. Now I said, when you're shooting through brush and shooting archery, if you hit the littlest branch, you can send your arrow kicking off. But what it also does is it alerts the game to that arrow flight. And it's like they can pick it up out of midair if they haven't heard your string and started jumping your string already. I've, had, I've hit a leaf before, and then I've had a deer pick it up just like that and duck my arrow. I mean, they're, they're always on alert, and that little bit can give your position away. So that's why these techniques come in handy. And it comes with practice. Like I said, my exact gaps between my brushes are gonna be different from yours. And that comes with practice. One thing you can do to practice so you don't start you know, breaking arrows or losing arrows, you can set up your own simulated limbs on your, on your shooting lane. You can use uh, pool noodles, uh, toilet, pla toilet paper, anything. Drape them over uh, to act like an overhanging branch, or you can set up a, a bunch and shoot through a pocket. All right, so that's one way that you can prevent yourself from going in the woods and sticking your <laughs> sticking your arrow ten feet up on a branch where you can't even get it back. So you can use that method to practice with. And like I said, I said it many times. Keyword is practice. All right, eventually this will all become second nature. You'll see a, a pocket or you'll see an overhanging branch, and before you release, you'll know that your arrow trajectory will be fine and you're gonna pass through just like that. But the method I showed you how to do this is how you get to that point, all right? It all takes practice. And I know I said it a hundred times, but I cannot stress it enough. With traditional archery, you have to know the capabilities of your bow and yourself. And you have to be comfortable with that and confident with that in order to take it to the deer woods. So I hope you guys liked the video. Catch you in a bit.